Hey guys, so welcome back. I've been gone for about a month and a couple weeks, I think, and I have a little loser with us today. Um, this is my baby Julian. If you haven't seen the video before, show him to you. See, he's out right now. But um, this is my sweet boy. He's about, yeah, about seven weeks old now. He weighs about nine pounds. And I think it was like four and a half ounces at the doctor's appointment we just went to. Um, but he is doing so good. He's so healthy. And he eats so much. <laughs> but I want to come on here and do my birth, my birth story for you guys. Because I did share a, um, like, pictures of him from birth and, like, need him pretty much. So this is actually, like, him live, not on a picture. Um, I will be sharing like one month of him, like a few videos I took whenever we got him out of the hospital um, soon as well and my postpartum stuff. Um, I'll be going kind of into that but not in detail because I'm going to save that one for that video. Um, but yeah. First, please excuse the way I look. I just straightened my hair and then he started crying so I just fed him and, and he's starting to devils off on me. But um, So my birth story. Where do I start? Um, I was technically like in labor, like from early labor all the way until I delivered for like four days. So it was like crazy. Um, I had some complications with my doctor. Uh, she wasn't there. There was a lot of stuff going on. So I'm just gonna jump in from the beginning from like my 39 week checkup all the way until I had them. So I can explain that to you and like what happened and what happened on like everything that happened and that doctor's appointment. So I went to my 39 week checkup. Sorry if I place my hair. It's like in my face and it's hot in here. Um, so I went to my 39 week checkup and I get there my doctor checks me, tells me that I am not dilated, naughty face. Um, I'm like pretty much like solid rock and she was like preparing me that I'm most likely gonna have to have a C-section because my I'm not effacing and dilating like I properly should at 39 weeks so that was like scary in that moment I was like terrified because I'm terrified to get cut open that much um but I just took it with a grain of salt and had to prepare myself for that and be prepared for that so I said okay well she told me that her daughter was having surgery out of state and that she had to go of course she had to go with her that's her family and I said, that's okay. She was going to be gone for three weeks, which unfortunately I was 39 weeks pregnant. So there's no way in three weeks she's going to be here for to deliver my baby. So that was on a Monday. I wasn't in labor or anything at that time. Um, so I had to prepare myself for a doctor I'd never had met to deliver my baby. Um, I might be having a C-section by a doctor I do not know. And I've never done labor before. This is my first baby. So that was like pretty like terrifying I'm not gonna lie like it was terrifying um thank god my husband was there with me because I don't know what I would have done I kind of freaked out anyway um but I mean he called my nerves and helped me get through a lot of it so after that appointment um Saturday is whenever like things started to really like take course all week I was fine my last day of work was um, Saturday the 28th that morning was my last day of work and I was going on my maternity leave. Well, why, Papa? Sorry, he's wiggling and stretching. So, um, Saturday the 28th, I worked like a morning shift. I worked like 9 to 3 or something um, with my husband. So, and he got up at 3 and we were going to have like, this is our last Saturday night as a, like we knew this is going to be our last Saturday night. We're not going to go another week. Um, I really felt like he was going to come earlier and I felt like he was going to come on Saturday, which was the 28th. Um, just something in my gut my whole time told me my whole pregnancy. I picked that day, like you try to guess when you're going to have the baby and something in my gut told me I was going to have him on the 28th. Um, I did not, but I went into labor on the 28th. So a lot of videos I watch out here on YouTube, I was watching like everything because it's your first baby and you don't know what to expect and you watch like everything because you're nosy, right? So I watched a lot of people and almost 90% of people were telling me that when your mucus plug comes out, it's not 
Um, like it's not labor, it's nothing to worry about. By the way, if you're under 18, please click out of this video because it is like TMI and I don't want children watching this. Um, so please click out now if you're under 18, please. Um, and it is TMI, so if you can't do TMI, click out as well because it's about to get real like TMI. So my mucus plug came out and I was having like a period cramp. We had went to, um, we have a drive-in movies here in Tulsa. Um, and as a kid I went and as a kid I was telling my husband about the story every time I go like my sister or my cousins they would bust their head open as like babies because they're like five six seven years younger than me um that they would bust their head open and we or they would like get hurt we would have to always go to the hospital because it's not like technically safe out there for kids to play around but they would always play around and be too rough and get hurt so we kind of like quit going and so I told them, I said, it would be really funny if I went into labor tonight as we're watching the movie. Well, lo and behold, that happened. We were watching the new Lion King and Toy Story 4. At our driving movie, we get back-to-back -back double movies. So we watched the Lion King first. Are you stretching? We watched the Lion King first, and um, I started to get, like, period cramping pains. And I'm just thinking, like... This is normal. This is just like, cause he's really low and he's about to come out. Like just normal pains. I was like, no big deal, no big deal. Well, between the movies, I got up to, you know, go get a drink and use the restroom. Well, at this time I'm like pretty much, I'm 40 weeks pregnant. Cause Saturday was like, Saturdays are my week marks. So I was 40 weeks. Like this baby could come now and it'd be fine. So, um, I said, okay. And, uh, I go and I said, I was like, hey, honey, can you walk with me? Um, I don't know if I can make it to the bathroom. Like, I was really swollen and stuff. And, like, I just felt really lightheaded when I walked too much. So, and, of course, I had to walk from my car all the way up to, like, our, our concession and stuff was under the big screen. So, you had to, like, walk all the way up there. And I said, can you walk with me? And he was like, yeah, I can walk with you. So, I go up there and I go to the bathroom first. And, like... People say you don't catch your mucus plug. Honestly, if you don't clean yourself, like after you have sex, that's disgusting, but you should, because you know what I'm talking about when I say this. No one described to me, like people say it like, it's like egg whites. To me, it felt like whenever a guy goes in you and you wipe, that's whenever, that's what it felt like. No, I didn't feel it, but that's what it looked like. Except it had like, it looked like little veins of blood. That's what my mucus plug looked like. And I was like, I knew it was because it wasn't like normal discharge or anything like that. It was like weird, like that consistency. So I was like, all right. And um, if you know what I'm talking about, that's like what it looks like. I thought I may have lost it. I didn't know if I did or not. So when that happened, my pain just consistently stayed there. Like cramp here, cramp there, kept cramping, and then it would get like tighter and like more intense and more intense. But my thing was is this isn't supposed to be like how your like labor starts. It's not your mucus plug is just like opening for your dilation, not for um, like pain. I've never heard pain with it. Well, my experience was different. Um, so after we watched that, we watched Toy Story 4 and um, I told him, I, was, I said, honey, I want to go home. I, I don't feel good. My body hurts. Something's wrong. I'm having really bad cramps and I can't really stand it. So after that, I went, we went back to the car after having those pains, after going to the bathroom, seeing all that. We went back to the car, watched Toy Story 4. It just kept getting worse and worse. And it was like normal contractions, like um, here, there, but it would be like a worse pain. It just kept building up. Like I was having contractions, but they were like five minutes apart. And I was like, there's no way this is labor. Like, it just felt like a period cramp, but intensified. And I was like, maybe this is like, but like, I didn't know. Well, then towards the end of the movie, which is, at this time, it's like two or three in the morning the next day. So remind you, this is 28th. So this is the 29th now. And I said, honey, I think I need to go to the hospital. And he was like, what do you mean? Because we made it home. And then I was laying there and I was like, something is wrong. Like, you just have this instinct and it was something was really wrong. And I was just like, I don't feel right. I think we need to go to the hospital. But I was always like, no, let's not go whenever I felt like I needed to go because I didn't want to go because it's embarrassing. It's your first kid. You think that you're in labor and you're not. 
Well, I went to the hospital and they put me in triage, checked me. I was, I had nothing dilated or faced. I became 50% effaced and um, like inch, uh, like one inch to two inches dilated, which I was nothing 12 hours before that. So that's like crazy to me, like crazy. So within five days, I had started dilating my face and you're supposed to get face like what my doctor is explaining, you're supposed to get face for like the whole month before you go and like start dilating so your cervix thins out, which I took, I took primrose oil and I drank that um, red leaf tea. So I figured that I would. So it didn't happen until like last minute and it started doing it. So I was like, okay, well maybe I can have this baby natural, you know. So she checked me, she um, just watched me in the monitor for about an hour. Well, when I went, every time I would go to the hospital, my, I don't know if you guys, if you do comment on this, like, and let me know if it happened to YouTube, but I felt like my baby knew when I was at the hospital. At home, I would time them and I, I don't know if I saw them or not, but I can like post them up here if I do. I had like a contraction timer on my phone and I would start and end the contraction and watch how far apart they are and like how far apart they are from each one. Like how long they're going. They would last a minute or two, like almost two minutes one time. And they went for 45 minutes at two to three minutes apart. And I'm telling you, I was like, okay, we're going to the hospital. Like after 45 minutes, I was like, this is an hour long. I got to the hospital, they were five to 10 minutes apart. Like they would not stay consistent. And all the way up until I had my baby, they were not consistent. Even like after I was on epidural and Pitocin, they were not consistent contractions. They never stay between one to two minutes or two to five minutes, nothing like that. So when I, when they tell you like, go, go between two to five minutes, no honey, wait till you're a minute and two minutes apart because they won't admit you. They'll just send you home and send you a big bill. So that's the truth right there. So they sent me home. Um, within eight hours, I went back and this time I'm in like a lot of pain where I feel like I can't stand it. And it's like this pain from the movies when I went the first time all the way up until eight hours later, I still have this like consistent cramp of like somebody stabbing me, but it would not go away. Like when you have a contraction, it's just to hurt, 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 and then ease off, hurt, hurt, ease off. And that's not what's happening. It was just staying there. Like it wasn't easing off and I would get comfortable with it. And once I start to, my body would start to relax, it would get more intense. And I got to the point where I was like, kind of like crying, like I couldn't stand it. Like there's something, they gotta give me some pain medicine, some relief. So I go back, she gives me a shot in my hip for pain. I start the medicine started with a D, Demerol, Demerol, something like that. And so I went in for, it was like an hour. She had to call the doctor, make sure it was okay, which I haven't met this doctor yet. This is Sunday, like during the day. I haven't met this doctor. I don't know who she is. Um, she doesn't know me. I've never seen her in her, like face to face. So that was like kind of intimidating. Like she don't know anything about me and she's telling me whether I can have it or not, which I was like, no, I need it now. Like, you know, you're the one that's in pain. The doctor doesn't know how much pain you're in. They can't, you know, it was just frustrating in a way. So then they, they got a hold of her. She said, yeah, she can have it, blah, blah, blah. They put the shot like in my hip. It wasn't even in my butt. So it didn't really like hurt afterward. Um, so they did that. I was hooked up to the mantra for an hour before that because I was waiting to be okay for it. And then they did it and they're like, okay, we're gonna leave you on the monitor for about 30 more minutes. And then um, just to make sure, because my contractions were staying close, 45 minutes had went by. When I hit that hour mark, when he, she came back in to give me the shot, they started separating again, like five to eight minutes, which was like super annoying. Cause they, you have to be, you get admitted if they are like 10 minutes apart cause they're too close. So she checked me again. I'm still at it. Like I'm barely a two. And I'm like 75% of face at this time. So I'm, my, I'm a facing finally, but I'm not dilating. But I'm in like excruciating pain. And I'm not understanding why I'm in so much pain if I'm not dilating. Well, then I was like, okay. So after she gives me the Dermarol, she waits about 30 minutes. And she comes in there and she goes, well, we're going to call the doctor. Make sure it's okay. But we're going to unhook you for the monitors. And you can go home because your contractions are not staying consistent. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like... They can stay, stay consistent until 45 minutes and then they would stop being consistent. So it was like really, really frustrating um, with that. But now that I know my body and I'll be like, next time I go, like they won't ever be consistent because my first labor was not. 
So, um, then she releases me. She says, go to your doctor tomorrow at 1. And by the time I leave, it's like 10, 11 o'clock at night. So, I was like, okay, I'll go home, relax, sleep, and then go back. Well, as soon as she walked out the door, the monitor started going off. And I was like, what's going on? Well, you have a monitor for the baby's heart rate and you have a monitor for your contractions on you, like strapped on you. And if I have the picture, so I'll upload it. If not, it's on my Instagram on my um, pregnancy story tab. So, and I'll leave my Instagram name like down here so you can just go follow. But it's also in my description box down below. So you can just click on it and then go over there. But um, anyway, you have like two little monitors and one monitors him and one monitors you. Well, my contractions were like being normal. And then all of a sudden she comes rushing in there and she's like, you need to go on all fours right now. And I'm like, um, okay. And I'm starting to feel kind of good from this Demerol that she just gave me. Like I'm starting to relax. And I think that's what put him in distress is what happened because it's been almost two days now that I felt like something was wrong. Well, his heart rate dropped really low. They flipped me on all fours, like within like of me saying, I can't, as soon as I said that, I was flipped over. Like there was no time to do anything. Sorry, I have sun shining over here, so I'm sorry about the lighting, guys. Um, so after that, let's see, sorry guys, I can't fix the light, I'm really sorry. So after all this, they flipped me on all fours and I'm like, okay, this is like, what the heck, what's going on? She's not explaining to me what's going on. She's like, I need oxygen. And like, all these nurses come in. Which remind me, this is like almost the middle of the night. There's only like three people when you walk in there. You don't see all these nurses. And I'm talking, there was like seven people in there. Whenever this shoot machine started going off. So, it got like really crazy. And he, they finally got hit, found his heart rate. They, she had the monitor and she was like down on my stomach. And she was like moving it around and pushing really hard. And I'm like, <sighs> like, I can't breathe. These contractions are hurting. Then the pressure of her hand on it. Like, I'm like, don't touch me when I'm hurting. So that was like really bad of her like grabbing me. And then I was like, okay. And finally they found his heart rate. They strapped the thing around me. They're like, and she, she kind of like joked about it. It was serious, but like they made me feel okay. Like being kind of jokey and fun. She was like, um, everything's okay. His heart rate just dropped. Sometimes they roll on their umbilical cord. Like, it's okay. And then she said, well, I told you you're going to go home. And he was like, no, you're not. You know, so I stayed for about 30 minutes to an hour. I can't really remember because I was still on the dim roll. Like, my pain relief is kind of, like, easing up at this time. And I kind of, like, dozed off here and there. So I can't remember. But I know I was there for quite a while after. Just so I could be monitored. Just so his, his heart rate dropped it in. Like, he wouldn't, like, die or anything. Why, you know, I'm at home. So... After the dim Demerol situation, after his heart rate dropping, and I've been there for two days, like in and out for two days, they sent me home. After that, they sent me home. I understand their protocol and why they can't admit you, but when someone's saying, like, there's something wrong, obviously there's something wrong. But I did sign papers saying, that's okay, I can go home or whatever. I felt more comfortable going home, um, try to get myself comfortable. I thought I was in normal labor. Everybody does the first kid. You don't know. So now that I know better, I probably won't next time. But um, I came home. They told me to get in a hot shower, hot bath. Now, that did help after my Demerol wore off. Because by the time I got home, it was like 30 minutes. And my Demerol was wore off. Like, gone. So I went back to, right back to having pain being home. So I felt like they should have gave me like another shot of Demerol before I left. Or something to help with pain but they didn't so I was like did not get any rest like it was like 30 minutes but when I was starting to doze off and relax that's whenever they put me on all fours and then I had to stay so the dim roll wore off you know um, that was like the event for that moment it was like not that great so after all that I went home she said go ahead and the doctor said you did not have to come in because you've been here for the last two nights and I turned around and I said, no, keep my doctor's appointment. Tell her I still want it. I want to meet my this doctor because my doctor's gone on her family emergency, which I understood that. So I was like, I want to meet her. I want to explain what's going on. Maybe she will have a different perspective when she sees me like face to face. 
which at this time it's about like 12 13 hours before I can see her and remind you I'm still barely two and 75% abased so the night goes on I go home it's like two in the morning at this time by the time I get home um I'm in pain I'm jumping from the bathtub to the shower I did that a couple times finally I just gave up and I was out of breath and tired so I laid down I dozed off for maybe 30 minutes and the pain got worse like every time I would relax it would get worse and worse and worse and worse like I could just it would not let off it was horrible and um so after that I went and saw her I did not go back to the hospital until one o'clock when I went to go see her I sat there explaining everything at this point I am holding on to my husband and I'm like this and I'm like uh, like letting it out like the pain trying to let it out through my mouth which isn't like the best way and people don't want to hear you kind of thing but I didn't care I felt like if I let it out the pain was going to go away um which is not true but that's how I was able to get through it for me everybody is different you know I don't I don't care what people look at me some people do I don't care so then finally I call back in the office. We talk to her. She walks in and I'm literally holding on to him doing that. And at this point, tears start rolling. Like that's how much pain I'm in. And I'm sitting here holding it in. And my husband knows like, I don't cry. I don't, I handle pain very well. So whenever it started to get really bad like that, he was like, he did not like to see me in that pain. He just got really quiet, but I kept grabbing his hand, like squeezing bloody murder. Like I'm surprised his hand was not broken guys. Like. It was so bad like the pain was bad so she says at one o'clock which if I was ever an OBGYN I would check you anyway like I get like this protocol and you go by the textbook with labor but everybody's not by textbook hence me I wasn't I wasn't uh, facing right I wasn't dilating right and the baby should already been here by now because it's 40 weeks which a lot of people go over um, but it was just like intense so this is like day three now at this time i've been in labor i was in early labor i'm like halfway through labor like uh i guess you call it active labor at this time and then uh you have like trans something like that transition or something so i don't know the terms for it but i just know i was like early like it wasn't that bad to now it's like mediocre almost bad like tears are rolling she goes okay well you know, she was going to put me off until the baby came on its own, which three days of labor is already like, that's just stress on a baby. Anybody can tell you that even though it's early labor, it does not matter. I'm having pain that is bothering me. Like I can't stand it. So she was like, I said, do, okay. So I met her. She's a real, real sweet lady, but I would not prefer her as my doctor. Um, my doctor was really like a totally different person. Like, she knew what she was doing. I'll give her that. But just her personality-wise, my doctor was more for me than, like, she was. And I just felt like I was really looked over. I didn't like that. Um, other than that, she was a great doctor. Like, different than my baby and stuff. So, um, with all that being said, I said, what are my options on getting this baby here? Like, can I be, like, induced or... Um, what's going on with it? Like, do I have to wait for him to come naturally or what's going on? Like, can, do I have to have a C-section? That was my question because being thrown up in the air, not even five days before going to see her again was crazy. Like, am I, I'm getting told I'm going to have a, a C-section. I want to have my baby natural, like try to do it as natural as possible. Never had labor before, so I don't know if I can handle it or can I be induced? That was my three, op you know, those are your three options. So I asked her, it's like, um, am I going to have a C-section, whatever? Nope. You're, you're dilating, you're facing, you're going to have this baby natural. Okay. So that was out. And unless like emergency happened, then he would be C-section. So that option was out and I felt more relief from that, but still, I don't know this doctor. I've never went to her. Like that was kind of like intimidating for me because I'm a very private person and not knowing me at all, not being there my entire pregnancy. I think it would have been a little different if it was like, four weeks before my baby and I'd see her every week but I just met her the day before I had my baby like crazy Monday is when I went to the doctor and then Tuesday is when I had my baby so after leaving there she tells me I'm not gonna check you because you the hospital's been checking you so I'm not gonna worry about it 
which in that sense, she should have checked me because I was already three, three days in it. She's seen all the time I've been in the hospital. They've been calling her. She should have checked me because I went from a two to a six in like an eight hour time span, which is pretty intense um, and fully faced too. So that's why I was in so much pain is my, ba my body was playing catch up for 48 hours instead of doing the month process it's supposed to where you have pain, a little bit of pain that goes away for a couple days. No, mine was like 48 hours of going from zero of nothing to fully, full blown. And I was like, okay. And she didn't check me, so she didn't know this. How I found this out was, is I went to the hospital after this. And she, I, she said, I said, do I have these options of being induced? And she said, yeah, you do. If you feel like you want to be induced, I, su I suggest you think about it and wait another week, like be 41 weeks. And decide then if you want to be induced or not. Um, I recommend that as a doctor. You know, you want to be fully, full baby, full duly developed so you don't have no problems. Okay, I understand. I'll think about it. And I'm thinking maybe I'm just being a big baby. This pain isn't that bad, you know. I try to talk myself out of it. So I said, is there a way I can get a hold of you if I email you today and get this induction done or whatever if it gets way too bad to where I can't stand? Yeah, just email the office. The office ladies will tell me and we'll get taken care of. Okay, that's fine. I also want to talk one-on-one -on -one with my husband and my family and get their opinion on what I could do because you start to freak out with your first baby. Like, I have anxiety and depression. If you have that, you'll understand, or PTSD. I silently started freaking out. I started bawling because I'm scared. I don't, you can't stop what's happening and you don't know what's going to happen. And that's what really messes with people with their anxiety. So, I was like really under a lot of pressure and making a decision. I didn't know if that's what I wanted. And so I talked to my mom, my work mom, or my son's godmother in other words. And I talked to my husband. My husband, I talked to him and he said, I think you should go ahead. Because he's watching me be in this pain for the last three days. And I don't think he can stand it anymore, you know. So, and I talked to my mom. She thinks it's a good idea. Like, he should have already been here. She's been on the phone the last three days with me. And then, same thing with my, with my um, work mom or his godmother. She said the same thing. She said, I think it's a good idea. You're already full term, pretty much, you know. It's not like you're trying to get him induced at 35 weeks or something. You know, nothing crazy like that. So, I went ahead with the induction. I emailed her, like, not even an hour after I talked to everybody, after leaving the office. I think I need to be scheduled for an induction. I don't know if I can do the pain. And after I left there, it like got intensifyingly worse. Like I could stand it and walk in the hospital up there to her doctor's office. But when I got to my, cause I went to my mom, she lived like right up the road from the hospital. And I went over there to talk to her and it got like way, 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 way worse. Like I'm bawling, I'm screaming bloody murder. My mom's left home with like her realtor company and stuff. And she's like, shh. I felt bad, but I couldn't help it because I was in so much pain. I just wanted to scream. Like, there was nothing... Excuse me. Sorry. There was nothing I could do. That's how much pain I was in. I wanted the agony to go away. Like, the pain was the worst part for me. Um, my husband was like, okay. Like, you know, my mom was like, don't let your water break on my couch. You know, I'm like, it's not going to happen. I thought it did. I really did. I thought I peed myself. Didn't happen. And the reason I know that, I'll tell you that here in a minute when we get to that part. But my water did not break at home. Um, nothing like that. So she finally calls me and says, hey, this is so-and-so at the doctor's office. Um, we're going to schedule your induction for midnight. Is that okay? Um, that's the earliest we have. Okay, that's fine. If that's the earliest you have, completely fine. Because I guess they do it at night because a lot of people don't come in at night to have their baby or something like that. Um... But I said, okay. And I said, if I have any more pain, can I go in before? Because I am on the phone, like, trying to talk to her. And I had a contraction. And she sounds, she's like, you sound like you're worse than you were here just an hour ago. And I said, yeah, I can't. I'm crying. So I did the best I could to make it to midnight. It was, like, 11-ish. Whenever, like, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. I told my husband. And we were laying in the bed. I went from literally nonstop. After the doctor called, I said, Mom, I'm going to go home. It's not till midnight. Um, I'm going to try to relax, get in the hot shower or whatever. I came home and literally 
went from my shower to my master bath, which my master bath, um, when I remodel it, I'll do like a video for that too. Um, the summer coming up, because we have a lot of remodels going, but um, in my bathroom, I don't have a shower head. It's just the bathtub. So I went from my bathtub relaxing. Once I would get relaxed, it would start to hurt. Then back to the shower, standing with the water, like hitting my back. And back, back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like, I swear, no less than 20 times. Within, for those like four hours, I couldn't do nothing. Because at this time, it was like 6 o'clock whenever I heard back from the doctor. So I was okay. And I said, honey, you need to put the bags in the car. We need to go to the hospital. I'm having this baby. Like, I'm in that much pain. Like, I could barely talk. And he was like, what? And I said hospital now like that's all I could get out it was so bad I couldn't really talk to nobody it hurt to do anything or move walk and my hips at the time like the last week you when I walked they would pop really loud and I was like what is that I was like those are my hips because they were separating for him to come down you know so that was like it was hurting like massively at the time like I could feel the pressure of him about to freaking just come out so I was like okay we need to go now. So it's like 10, 30, 11 o'clock ish when I get there. Cause I live like five minutes from the hospital and I get there and I had like, out of, I had like five, five to 10 nurses. I'm not gonna lie. Um, like interchange for the whole like day I was there. And, um, I only had one, one bad nurse. And I think I've been in hospitals where I've had worse. Like, every nurse besides one was good, you know. Um, but I only had one bad nurse, and it was the night I walked in. And it was not the good time to do that to me because I was not the happiest camper. I was already in pain. Like, if I don't know about you, but whenever I'm in pain, um, I don't like to be, like, rudely talked to. And it will just make me upset more. So, um, I went in. I said, they're going to have to give me some pain medicine or something, honey. I can't do this and I had the whole time people say you yell at your husband and tell him that you hate him or you did this or whatever um no I I didn't I I just grabbed a hold of him and squeezed his arm to death until it fell off you know that's what was gonna fall off is what he thought it was gonna happen um but I never like yelled at him I just kind of like yelled in general with the pain um so after they got me to the hospital, we're in a wheelchair, and then he takes me all the way upstairs because ours is on the third floor of this hospital, or second or third floor, something like that. And he takes me to the wheelchair, and I, like, get all the way into labor and delivery. And I'm like, look, I'm supposed to be induced at midnight. It's not midnight. I need some pain medicine now. Like, I'm barely being able to talk, you know. And they're like, okay, okay, room 224, and I told my name, and, like, I'm supposed to be induced river. So there you had a room prepared. No one was there, and I was the only person having a baby. And I was like, stop, stop, Tony. And I was in the wheelchair and I started to have like this really, like the pain just got, don't move, don't touch me, don't, nothing. Like it was so bad. Like you could not move. I just don't move, don't touch. Like I just want to hold still, still as possible, you know? And I'm like, ah, like in the chair. I never thought I'd be that comfortable to scream in a hospital, but I was screaming bloody murder and tears are like rolling. I was bright red, but my husband said, I see that I was like bright red and um, the nurse was like, she was like, room 224. She was like, kind of rude when she said to begin with. And then she was like, well, she's not 39 weeks till midnight. And remind you, like, I'm past 40 weeks. Like, way on past after Saturday. And I was like, I was 40 weeks Saturday. Like, give me the pain medicine now. I am past 39 weeks, you know. And you don't, like, you shouldn't talk to where pregnant women can hear you when that happens. Because this is not what you want to hear. And she goes... Like, right after I said that, she was like, you can go to your room now. Like, I was like, excuse me? Like, you know, like, I'm in pain. You need to get me some medicine instead of be a little, like, B-I-T-C-H, if you know what I mean. So, I was like, okay. So, I go in there, and then the sweet old lady came in there. Not really old, but she was, like, 60s-ish. Like, older. And knew what she was doing. Like, been around doing labor for, like, 40 years, is what she said. And she's like, okay, honey, I gotta check you first. Um, we can't, like, admit you until midnight, but I can get you something to help with the pain. I said, that's fine. Just get me something. Like, I need something to relief. Just a moment. Like, I can't breathe. Because I felt like I was, like, not breathing. So, they put oxygen on me. And I, I was, like, turning colors. Like, you know, red. I couldn't breathe. And I was like, 
like I felt, I how to explain it? Like you already can't breathe because you're so big, but I felt like my oxygen was getting shut off. Like I, I just felt like I couldn't breathe. That's all I can say, like I couldn't breathe. And I said, I can't breathe. Like this is really a lot of pain. I need some medicine. So she put, you know, your wristbands around you for the doctor's office. And she's like, okay, I'm gonna scan these bands and look at what you're like allergic to, blah, 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 blah. Well, they gave me morphine. I don't know if your doctors gave you morphine, but they gave me morphine and I'm allergic to codeine is why. Um, I got morphine. Every hospital is different. They do different. Some do, some don't. Um, pain med, like a pain medication they put in IV. So the same girl, so after that, she's still doing that on the computer. She has to go through and double check everything. Um, like what is, do I have anxiety, depression, stuff like that. Like they ask you questions like, have you ever thought about killing you or yourself or anybody else or whatever like crazy stuff so I was like okay like I understand that they have to ask that but it was like really like I was just here 12 hours ago down here in the hospital you don't need to ask me the same question you asked me 12 hours ago I understand they have to do that so whatever so story goes on um the girl that not only told me to go to my room talked to me rudely within the last hour comes in there to do my IV girl let me tell you I've been in this body for almost 23 years I know when where to draw my blood what doesn't work for me like and I'm like a needle like terrified of needles I know I have tattoos totally different like needle okay so IVs I do not like IVs I'm not like getting my blood drawn and I know by getting my blood drawn, going through the three hour glucose, that my right side IVs, they like roll. Like my veins, they roll, like they move. Like, like weirdly and stuff will come popping out and it doesn't ever stay. So I tried to explain that to her. She had poked me twice in my hand. And by this time, my mom finally got up there, like trying to help me with everything because I've never been labeled like this. She's never been in a natural birth labor room either. So it was like, her first experience but she kind of knew about labor because she had a c-section so she knew like the IV and all that stuff they had to go through so remind you i don't do needles so if i see a needle like the syringe part like the needle part you have so long to get that needle in me or i would pass out like i just don't do needles blood nothing like that so um, my mom knows that my right arm is like that and my left arm I always get my IVs my blood work everything done on my left arm even when I had the three hour they did all my left arm because my veins would roll and they couldn't get them stuck she did it twice and they both blew and uh, I felt like I was gonna pass out and I like looked at my mom and you know when you can like just look at them and like speak with your eyes that's kind of what happened and I was like freaking out because I like to watch and she kept telling me to look away like I'm gonna watch you stick me with an IV I have like a phobia and I get more relaxed when I watch like I have control um, when I don't watch I don't like that unexpected poke I just don't um, so I felt like I had more control whenever I was watching and that made me feel more comfortable well she kept telling me to turn away turn my face away like if she could have put her hand on my face she would have to make me turn that's how bad it was um, so my mom was like after the second time my mom was like if you don't get her this time you're done because I was like, look at her, like, my eyes were rolling. Excuse me. My eyes were rolling in the back of my head. Like, I felt like I was going to literally faint. Like, even though I was in a lot of pain and she's trying to stick me with a needle, which was not working, I felt like I was going to pass out because I had so much pain. And then she was conflicting more and I don't do needles. So, you either got one shot that was it at that time. Well, the third one, she's like, I can get it. Like, didn't even take an aspect that I said... Put it in my left side. It only take one try. Not even like considering me or how I felt, um, which made me feel like, really upset. Like all the rest of the nurses, they were wonderful. They everything I asked was taken care of on a snap. Never had backlash, nothing like that. This is the only one that did. And so my mom let her do it one more time, and she did it again. She blew my IV, and mom was like, "You're done. Like we need to get somebody else to do her IV. Like you can't do this." And she's like, no, I got it. Like, my mom snapped. Like, we have hot tempers in my family, but that was like messing with me. It was not okay. And I snapped at her already. My mom went loose on her. And so she got my V that time. And it was like, she poked like here, 
there, here, and then she went way down here is where she got the last one. But I felt like I couldn't move my hand. My hand felt so bruised. And I'm right-handed, so why would you put, when you're having a baby, you hold your husband's hand or whatever with your right hand, okay? And that's your strong hand. That's what you're going to want to squeeze with. Why would you put an IV in a right-handed person's hand, right? Makes no sense. So I was like, okay. She finally got it. They hooked me up to a, just a fluid bag because they have to put fluid in you before they give you pain medicine or anything like that. So she hooks me up to fluid, gets it going. She's still working on the stuff on the computer, which it's moving a lot faster than I'm telling it. Like it was like five minutes that all this had went down. And she goes, okay, well, I have to check your cervix before I let you have any pain medicine before we get up to that. Because you can run the liquid, like the fluid and pain medicine at the same time. Um, so she goes, okay, I have to check you. So of course I go spread eagle, let her go check me. I'm telling you, when you get your cervix checked, you can feel their fingers and stuff in you, you know. When she went to check me, I could barely feel her. That is how dilated I was. And I was like, okay, did you check me? Like, you know, like I couldn't, but I was also in a lot of pain. So maybe I just kind of like muted it out. I don't know. So she checked me and she goes, oh honey. And I was like, what? She goes, you're like six and a half centimeters. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, you need to get the epidural now or you're not getting it at all. And I was like, oh shit. Like I didn't have a choice. So after I was admitted, they were doing IV. My husband had went downstairs to get our bags. My mom was up there with me and um, she had went out of the room for something when she had told me this. So I was in there by myself with this nurse, which thank God it was a nice nurse. And I kind of had anxiety going, which I have PTSD. So you have anxiety and depression that comes with the PTSD. Um, so my anxiety started, I started literally like shaking. Like I was diabetic, like, like couldn't hold still. I started to freak out because I knew my option. I was going to get the epidural. I couldn't do the pain anymore. And I was only a six and a half. But the reason my pain was so intense, it was 48 hours of my body going from zero to a hundred. That's how it felt like, you know, zero to a 10, like you were fully there and it was crazy. So doing all that 48 hours was a lot of pain. And all, the way my doctor described it to me was, is if my body would have done natural, I could have probably had a natural birth with no pain medicine because it doesn't hurt as bad as it did for it to catch up, if that makes sense. So I said, yes, give me that epidural. Um, he said, she said, okay, I have to call someone. They're on call. So he didn't get there till about midnight, which at this time it's 11 o'clock. I'm getting morphine. Um, which it took a while for me to hit. Like if I like drink or anything, it takes a while for me to like, you know, get drunk or stuff like that. Like get tipsy. Um, it takes a lot like, you know, and I said, okay. And she hooks me up and I like hit the button. It was like 30 minutes. I was like, look, I'm not feeling anything. Is there a way you can up it? Like, this is not helping me. Like nothing's helping me. He's going to be here in about 30 minutes. So you'll be all right. I said, okay. So I said 30 minutes. I can handle 30 minutes, but no longer than 30 minutes. I can't handle it no more. Finally, the, the morphine kicks in, but the anesthesiologist is there. And she goes, do you have like PTSD or depression? Because they ask you about depression and anxiety. They don't ask you about anything else, which they should ask about PTSD because a lot of people have that. Um, so I said, I do have anxiety and depression, but I have PTSD and that's really kicking in right now. Like I feel so intense that I, you don't have a feeling like it's gone. Like you don't know what to do. You're lost, you know, and her daughter in fact, has PTSD and went through labor with her. So in that moment, she was a perfect person for there to be so I could epidural because they would not allow my husband in the room, my mom in the room, nobody in the room when I got the epidural. It was just her and the anesthesiologist, which was terrifying. Not having someone familiar and comfortable was terrifying to me because um, that comfort would help with my PTSD. I would calm down. So I'm shaking like really, really bad. And he's like, explained to me, he was such a sweet guy, so gentle, told me everything he was doing, tell me, Harry, you're gonna feel a prick, here's the poke, we're doing the tube now, like, went through it really thorough and told me everything. I feel like if 
the nurse that did my IV was doing it, she wouldn't tell me when she was going to poke me. And that's like on your spine and your back. And you can't watch it. So that's really ter terrifying. So to have the the mindset of, okay, I'm about to get poked because he just told me you're going to feel a pinch now. I had, I could react to it instead of jump out of my chair, you know, because I'm getting poked in my back on your spine in a low sensitive area, which I already have a very, very sensitive back, like picking pop, popping pimples is really hard for me on my back. So to get a needle back there was really intense too. Like I was not okay. It was really bad. So she just kind of like held me and usually nurses, they just stand there in front of you and make sure that you keep your back like arched over, you know? She like kind of like held me and it made me feel comforted. And she was an older lady, so she was really sweet and she made me feel really warm and like not like I wasn't welcome, which helped a lot with my PTSD with that all going on. So after that patrol was in, um, they gave me a, like they let like the trial go through and they're like, do you feel any tingling in your legs? And I was like, not yet. Um, but he did have to do it twice. He had to numb me twice, which is like horrible. I didn't want that to happen. Um, but I was kind of numb in the area that he did the second needle for the numbing. Um, so it wasn't as intense as the first one, but it definitely was intense. Like you, it's in your back. Like that's the most terrifying thing, but the epidural was not as bad as the video seem. Um, I'll tell you that now. It was not as bad and I don't like needles. So if somebody can, like that is saying that, I'm telling you it's not that bad. So, um, the little pinch was over. I didn't feel the rest of it, except whenever he went and cause he, the first one he tried to do was in the top of my back, like upper area of my back. And I guess my vertebrae are closer than they normally should be. And it kept having a sharp pain when he was trying to do like the tube and it wouldn't like, it was really bad. So he removed it and did it lower. That's why I had to have a different one. Um, it was just because I couldn't get the tube in between my vertebrae to go down where it was supposed to be. So he just did in a lower area of my back, which um, was okay. And then about five minutes after he did it, I was good. I was like, whoa. So my morphine kicked in whenever he like walked in. So I didn't, my anxiety started to like calm down. Like that's the only thing that really helped. It, the pain management, not so much, but my nerves just, because I don't take medicine for my anxiety or depression or anything. So to get that to calm down was like what I needed just to chill because I, when you're so anxious and you want to freak out, just that chill moment is what you need in those moments like that. Um, so after that was done, everything was okay. Um, they weren't going to, they did not hook me up to Pitocin until I was eight centimeters. I did that within like an hour and a half, um, after getting the epidural. Usually the epidural slows it down for people. My body was already going like. I'm sure by the time he got my epidural in, cause it took him like 30 minutes to 45 minutes because that first one didn't go very well. Um, I was probably like a seven in the middle of him doing it because I was in pretty much a lot of pain whenever he was doing it. Um, so, and he, a lot of people say they do it in the middle of a contraction, like poke you and stuff. He did not. He was like, if you're in a contraction, let me know. I don't want to poke you and like hurt you, you know? And you can mess, be crippled and paralyzed from it. So I was like, okay, I'll let you know, like, or the nurse kept letting him know, um, when I was having like little ones, so I wouldn't jump, um, which was really great. Like to have that reassurance. Cause they say that they do it then. I think that's kind of dumb. I think you should not be having a contraction when they stick you. Um, cause you already in pain and that just, you know, people say you don't feel it when they do that, but I feel like it would have made me worse. Um, but I think he also knew that he was really cool. I mean, he was really great. And people always say when they give you that patrol, they always say, I love you, you know? And I was like, I said, thank you so much. Like, because to relieve that pain is all I needed. Like I was full on ready to have the baby. I wasn't scared of how pushing a baby out. The pain is what was bad for me. Like, I'll be honest, you know? And so, um, of course, after I got that, the next thing I was scared of was working while delivering. Uh, but at the point I didn't care, um, because I wouldn't feel it. If you're crying, I'm sorry. That's him. It's okay, Papa. You're all right. Um, but I knew that I wouldn't feel it no more because I have the epidural. So I was okay with it. I just don't want the aftermath of feeling everything if it ripped down there. Um, but other than that, I was kind of okay. Like I was, I was good. 
So, um, a couple hours go by. I dilated to an eight naturally. And then they said, okay, well, we're going to watch you. If you go to a 10, we're going to have the baby tonight. So, I was like, okay, which that day, it was Tuesday by that time. It was like six in the morning. We're going to have him today. You know, I said, okay, okay. Well, about five hours go by. At this time, it's 11 o'clock. Um, in the middle of the night, she was supposed to come break my water. She didn't. Uh, there was this, you know, because my water had not broke. So, hence me saying back in the beginning of this video, like, my water um, did not pop when I wasn't doing anything. It wasn't leaking either. It was not popped at all. Because 11 o'clock rolled around. She was supposed to be there at 7 to pop my water. It did not happen. 11 o'clock rolled around. And um, they finally reminded her, like, you need to come pop her water. Well, in the moment of all that happening, I said, my husband's st like standing talking to me by the bed. I said, I need you to look down here. And I was like pulling the cover off. I said, I feel like there's something hanging out of me, like some pressure, something's wrong. Like is his head hanging out or something? Like it doesn't feel right. And he's like, oh, you're probably just lying. I said, no, look, there's something, like I feel like something on my leg, like on your, like touching my thighs. And he was like, there's something gray hanging out of you. And I'm like, what do you mean? And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, is this my baby's head hanging on me? Like, this is not okay. And so I said, run and go get a nurse. Which, at the time, my mom was out of the room for some reason. And she came running in when she saw him run out. And he was like, something is hanging out of her or whatever. She looks and she's like, I think that's your water bag. And I was like, okay. Well, the nurse comes in and says, yeah, that's your water hanging out of you. I'll call her right now and get her over here. So, 11 o'clock, she came over, finally popped my water. When she did, this is when things started to get a little scary. So after eight centimeters, she also asked me at like six or seven in the morning, do you want to be hooked up to Pitocin? Your body is not going. Um, it's been five hours since we've checked you. Like they check me every time, but five hours since you've done anything. So I'm like, okay, I guess it's fine. Go ahead. I'm not going to feel it anyway, you know. So at the time at 11, I'm 10 centimeters dilated, fully effaced. Ready to push this baby out, and my water was not broke. So my water was hanging out of me, so it would not pop. It was like really like hard. Like that's why I said there was no way I was leaking. Um, she finally got it popped, and when she did, he had a bowel movement, and it like spewed water out, and it like how do you explain? Like exploded in me. Like did not come out like it was supposed to. And when it did, he swallowed some of his um, bowel movement. So. Um, he's, she's like, okay, you know, she told me what happened and what most likely happened is that he swallowed it and that he might not come out crying. So just be aware of that. I said, okay, is he going to be okay? Yes, he should be okay. Um, it's just that we have to get that out of his lungs before, you know, if he doesn't cry. Okay. Okay. As long as he's okay, that's all I want to hear. So they pop my water and they sit me up because he's low. Like my water's hanging out of me, obviously, but he's not like over my hump in my canal and that's where they want him so I, they set me up and he gets real low now like I feel like I have to shit and I have the epidural so you just feel like a lot of pressure like you need to push and I was like I said honey I feel like I need to push can you get my nurse and so she comes in there and she's like do you feel like you need to push and I said I feel like I need to push like I need to take a shit like I need to push she texts me she says you're ready to go you ready to have this baby and I was like yep let's do this you know so she does a little practice runs get him moved down even more where his head's like right there and you can see it um of course they asked me if I want a mirror I was like no I don't want to see none of that down there please don't um but later on I did see it my mom was taking pictures of everything um everything if you know what I mean so I did see who my hoo-ha and my baby come out without a mirror but I did not want to see that like you know like this I didn't want to see it like that um, I wish my mom would have got a picture of my water. I would totally like, I don't know if I would show that like my crotch. I'd probably black out my crotch, but show you. But like she, everybody got to see it. And it was like a gray bag hanging on me. And my husband said, watching my baby come out was better than seeing my water. Like the water was more disgusting than seeing the baby come out, you know, which you, you wouldn't think that, but it was. So all that being said, um, he was doing great. And we, after they broke the water, um, about 30 minutes to 45 minutes after, his heart rate decided to plunge again. Um, throughout the time I was in the hospital, it may have dropped a few here and there. And they put me, like, on a peanut that was, like, shaped like a peanut. Like, that little ball where you put between your legs. Which, that was totally, like, fine and whatever. Like, it wasn't a big deal. Like, they didn't make a big deal out of it. Um, I guess 
it happens all the time because he was like rolling around and on his umbilical cord is what was happening. So it's okay. Well, that he wasn't in my canal when that was happening. Like he was down, like downward, but he wasn't like deep in my canal where you couldn't get him out. In other words, um, if anything were to happen. So at this time, after he after been set up right, all this, his heart rate plunges. So death rate for infants is under sixty. Um, and he is at like 120s, 130s at this time, and he drops all the way to a 63. And I'm telling you, it sounded like fire truck sirens going off in my room. And like two nurses come rushing in, and she's called the nurse like multiple times about my heart rate dropping and stuff. Well, hi, honey. Hi, you're awake now. And um, so she saw what was going on, and she had me flip side to side, try to get it back up. It would not go back up. And mind you, I'm like fully numb. I can't really feel my legs and move and help them. Um, so then she grabs the phone out of her pocket, the little cell phones that they have, and like takes off running at the door. And of course, I don't know what's going on because I just know these things are beeping. I don't know what this is. I was like, something is really wrong. She just took off. She cut when she came back. I'm telling you, minimum of 15 people came running in that room. Everybody and their mom was there, it felt like. Um, she came in. She said, okay, you ready? Because we got to do this now. You know, like, I was understanding what was going on. I didn't know that, like, there was an emergency or stuff. They just kind of kept me calm because of my anxiety. So, um, after that, it got, like, really crazy. Um, his heart rate plunged to, like, a 62. They had me, like, with my, like, spread eagle trying to push him out, um, like, pushing and pushing like one two three you're good release so they called my doctor like okay we're gonna continue to push and then we're gonna stop when he, we like get his head to where this sort of needs to come out and we'll get her here so they called her told her that i was having the baby like right now that she needed to go over there it was like five minutes and she finally got over there and at that time they had pulled in the like head nurse over the facility and i never heard this before so this is why i really wanted to tell my birth story um, if you're still hanging in there, thank you guys for watching, but this is like the like interesting part. Um, I played tug of war to have my baby. Yeah, being serious, like full on tug of war. Um, the head nurse comes in there and she says, she got like this close to my face and was like, which no one had told me what was going on this time. All I knew that his heart rate was dropping, like nothing like serious, you know, and um, I did not know at the time that the death rate was 60. My mom was telling me all the stuff that um, they were telling her, um, like, in the hall to keep me calm because of my anxiety. Because if my anxiety, he felt everything, which would make it worse. She got this close to my face, and she said, um, well, should we did a practice run. And she grabbed a hold of one side of the towel, and I grabbed a hold of the other. And we were like this, like, literally playing tug of war with a, a sheet. And I grabbed a hold of it. She grabbed a hold of it, and she said, okay, Ready? And when I did that, I felt him move over that, like, you have a hump inside your um, vagina. You have a hump that, so it goes down like this, and you have, like, a little hump right here. And their head has to go over that and then come out. So, he, whenever she did that, I felt him go over. And I was like, can I keep going? Like, I need to push. Like, this needs to come out now. And she said, okay, you can't move. Because that was, like, his shoulders going over. His head was, like, right there. She said, when your doctor hits the door that's it and I said what do you mean and she got like that close to my face whenever I said that she said if this baby doesn't come out on the next push he's not gonna make it and when she said that my anxiety everything freaked out like because I'm not being told anything because my anxiety she didn't know that and she told me but I'm glad she did because I don't think I would have got him out so um I grabbed a hold of the towel she grabbed a hold of the other and my doctor hit the door she didn't have her scrubs on they threw a towel over her and the head nurse only had a towel over her like she got she was made it close enough to where she put her hands out and my baby's head fell on her hands like that's how intense it was um so she grabbed a hold of the other side of the towel and she was like ready now and she pulled the hold of it and I pulled the hold of it and we're like you know and I'm thinking this older lady I'm gonna pull on top of me my mom and my husband are sitting there and he said I turned purple and my mom said that my knuckles turned white that's how hard I was pushing to get him out because when you have a life or death situation you use every strength in you and by the miracle of God he made here perfectly healthy came out 
Um, but it was just intense. That last like hour of my labor, like he was in so much distress for four days. And I think that's what really made it bad. I feel like if they would have admitted me before and try to do things a different way, I think it would have been better. Um, but my labor, in other words, was okay. Um, I had him, he came out. He wasn't crying at first. I, I didn't get the whole hold your baby up thing. Um, they vacuumed him, like his mouth out and his nose and his ears and stuff. Um, then I heard him cry. And he was like, it wasn't even a cry. He was like, ooh, like that's the noise he made. Like, okay. And then when they lay him on me, that's when he cried. And I just like bat his butt and was like, shh, shh, shh. And then he quit crying. Like he wasn't like a bloody murder screamer. Um, I was going to get it on recording so I didn't have to do the story, but um, they would not let me record because it became an emergency. Like they brought incubators, like 15, there was like five nurses for the baby. There was at least six nurses in there for me. My husband, my mom, which is only supposed to be my husband in the delivery room. Whenever it became an emergency, my great grandmother got trapped in the room and my mom got trapped in there because um they were like, you guys are not leaving because there's only one door. So they didn't want them in the way for all these people rushing in when it was happening. So my grandma stood there like this. <laughs> I was like, I'm not looking kind of thing. Like that's all the last thing I remember seeing before I kind of like blacked out when I did that last push. And um, he came out and uh, I'm glad he's here and he's healthy and we didn't have no emergency anything. Um, but I've never heard of anybody playing tug of war to have their baby. And that was like really like cool. I would totally recommend um, doing it again. And I hope that nurse is there if I like have the baby again so she can do that for me because it made my labor feel a lot easier. Um, Cause holding your legs up and pushing, not everybody can do it. Everybody's different. And I really felt doubtful whenever I didn't feel like I was pushing anything with my legs up. But when I play tug of war, it's like it tightened my core. And it was coming out like that. It, that's how it should have felt when my legs were up and you're holding them. It didn't feel that way. Um, so that happened. He came out. He was perfectly healthy. Um, I did great. My doctor, well, she was not my doctor. She was just the fill-in for my doctor. She had went in and, you know, opened up my hoo-ha. We'll say hoo-ha. I don't like saying that the word. And she was looking to do, like, stitches and where I ripped and stuff. I actually did not tear on the outside at all. Um, on the inside, I had a very minimal rip. And she said that I only needed a few stitches. I think she only did, she did between two and four stitches, like sutures is what they're called. And they're dissolvable. And she did them. She said, you really don't need them, but I'm going to go ahead and do them for you. So that was like wonderful. She went in and did it, even though I didn't necessarily need them, she did it anyway. Um, because my labor was like, it wasn't bad. He's seven pounds, nine ounces. If you didn't watch that video, I'll try to leave the link below for like the meet him video. It's just a quick video of his name and uh, um, like what he weighed and the pictures of him and stuff. So yeah, he was like so perfect. And he's so perfect now, aren't you, Papa? He's right here in his little chair. That's why I'm talking to him. But it was not bad. And then within, so after that, about an hour after I had him, I asked the epidural to be removed because I didn't want to, I wanted the numbness to be there when they, before they took the tube out because I didn't want to feel that. They so took my, you get a catheter in your, where you pee, that kind of catheter because your epidural is called a catheter too. Um, they took the epidural catheter out and then went before when I started to push, they took the catheter out of my pee hole. So I had to like pee really bad because I had a lot of fluid. They did like two bags of fluid before they gave me the epidural within like 10 minutes when that happened whenever I had to get the epidural because it was such an emergency because I have I'm already at a six they won't in, in the state of Oklahoma they won't let you go past a six to get the epidural so I was like minimum borderline so I, I had to be rushed to do a lot of stuff um with all that but um about three hours after I had him I was up and walking to the bathroom uh, I felt okay like I didn't feel I felt sore like obviously I just pushed the eight pound the eight pound like seven pound baby out of there um, so yeah, I was sore and it felt like weird. Um, but because I didn't tear, I felt a faster recovery. A week after I felt good. Like I felt, I went back to my normal life, walking around normal, everything. Um, my belly has shrunken down now, but it did not start shrinking until about two weeks after I had him. Um, so that I will go into all that with my postpartum, but I just want to say like, 
the ripping part is what helped me have a fast recovery. So um, I did not rip and then I took care of everything. So that was my, that's my birth story, guys. Um, he came here, he's healthy. He passed his test, um, everything. Um, they did his hearing test at 12 hours. And I think because he was still like congested with all the um, bowel movement that he had swallowed on his own, um, he couldn't hear out of his left side. They recessed it 24 hours. He passed with flying colors. He passed 24 hour newborn test. Um, he's like so healthy. So I'm gonna show you guys since he's awake. He's so, he's so sweet. Hi, Papa. Here he is. He doesn't have a shirt on, but, cause someone just got a bath. But this is my sweet boy. Say hi, Julian. You saying hi? He's such a chunky monkey. I just ate it. But, aren't you chunky? Aren't you chunky? Yes. He loves a smile and he tries to talk. Isn't that right? He's so expressional. Like, he makes so many faces with his face and he coos and. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah? Is that how you feel? Big yawn, Papa. He's such a good boy. So, that's everything. I know this video is probably over an hour long, and I'm so sorry, but I wanted to tell everything about my birth story. I feel like a lot of people miss out when they tell their birth story. Um, but I wanted to tell you guys everything and how what went for me. And now, my labor was not a bad labor. It just was scary, and that's what kind of makes it bad. Um, but other than that, I had amazing nurses. Thank you, Bailey Medical. Um, and you nurses were amazing. Like, I recommend everybody have the baby at Bailey. Even though I had that one bad nurse, I had 10 good ones. And thank you for the people that helped me deliver my baby and get him here. Because, believe it or not, I'm trying not to cry. But he's everything to me. And to have him here healthy was the most important thing. You don't want to cry, Papa. You don't understand how emotional it is to be told that he might not make it on you. And to have those people that have the positivity and support for you, it means the world. And I don't think they know and get appreciated as much as they should and put up with that every day. And um, I just wanted to thank them in this video and like tell them how much it really means to me that how much they support and care about you even though they don't even know you they only know you for 24 to 48 hours you know um so thank you guys that work Bailey medical over in health delivery that was it was amazing thank you and um thank you for saving our lives like that's what matters you know and and that's crazy. So thank you guys. I don't mean to cry, but it really means a lot whenever, you know, like I said, when your lives are on the line and you don't realize how important it is until you become a mom. If you're watching this and you're not a mom, you'll, you understand whenever your baby's here and how much it really means whenever you have someone you barely know care about you so much and run and try to take care of you. And that's what it, like, it's perfect. Like, you know, they try to make everything the best. And I enjoyed that so much at Bailey Medical. I don't think I would have my baby use anywhere else. Um, yes, I would totally do it again. I get asked that all the time. Would you have another one? Yes, I would. Um, and I definitely have an epidural again. Um, I'm going to be waiting until after his first birthday. Um, I want my kids pretty close to together. Um, I'm not for sure if we're going to have him after his first birthday or second. Um, we have a lot of things we want to get paid off and uh, take care of. But I think someone's getting hungry. Are someone getting hungry? Or are you on daddy? Oh, here we go. See him, he's turn he turns red. He like is are you grunting? Yep. Nope, that's a cry. Okay. Okay. Do you wanna say bye, YouTube? Say bye. He said peace out. We're over it, aren't we? Okay, well. Thank you guys so much for watching if you made it this far. Thank you for all your support. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. I will be talking about my postpartum in my next video. So stay tuned. Um, hit the notification bell. Subscribe. Comment. Um, I would gladly love to talk to you guys and answer. 
So, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on my Instagram. That's where I post everything. And it's up to date to like today. Um, I've been behind on YouTube and I'm sorry, but I'm back guys. I'm going to do the best I can. I do have a newborn. So, um, stick with me. Okay. I'm going to try to keep him on everything and show him that when he's older. So he sees it. So you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.